Sports is brought to you by All Out Auto Repair, home of the $46 Saskatchewan and $66 Alberta Safety Inspection. Your complete automotive repair. Well, Moses, the Bobcats wrapped up a home and home at the Civic Center last night. Yeah, you know, they were trying to do what they haven't done all season. That was win three games in a row, uh, put that streak together. Uh, they would have the opportunity to, uh, like you said, facing that home and home with Sherwood Park. The Bobcats started strong right off the hop, just 56 seconds in. Braden Crone, top of the crease, puts it in the open cage, giving the Cats a 1-0 lead. Minutes later, a pair of 27s showing some love for each other. Lyndon Springer and Danny Smith, a very nice tilt there. We'll give this one to Springer. Minutes later, the puck will take a wicked bounce off the boards. Riley Wozniak, wide open net. His shot is deflected and hits the crossbar. Other way, Crusaders on a power play. Stefan Bazaar to Sean McTavish. He slots it home 1-1. Three minutes later, Garth Wallin will go bar down. Can't see it there, but trust me, it happened 2-1 for the crew. Second period, Wozniak again, open net, can't finish. Then, Austin Yaremchuk crosses the blue line. He'll rip into the shot. It goes off the post. Dying seconds in the middle frame, Matt Tompkins can't squeeze the puck. Casey Knight will tap it in. Doesn't get any easier than that. We're tied up at two, heading into the third period. Wasting no time, just under three minutes in the final frame. Colton Anderson left all alone, slides it home. Bobcats retake the one goal lead. Crusaders though, answer back on a three on one. Ryan Kruper goes roof daddy, ties it up. And Cats have been here before with a minute to go. McTavish scores his second of the night, makes it four to three. The crew go on to snap the Bobcats two game win streak with a four three score, splitting the home and home after the game. Head coach, pardon me, Ryan Parent talked about the costly turnover late in the game. I thought we played a good hockey game, you know, for most of that game. And I think, uh, you know, some mental mistakes uh, cost us the game. I think, uh, you know, we got caught on a bad change. And against a good hockey team, you, you can't do that. you got to have everybody on page, you know, changing when the puck's going north. Elsewhere, the Ponce would blow a one-goal lead with 10 seconds to go. Kevin Lacroix will send this one to overtime for Fort Mac. And just 10 seconds into the extra frame, Lacroix ends up with the game-winning goal. The mob take it 4-3. to three. Sticking with the AJHL, just one game on tonight. The Brooks Bandits are taking on Brian Curran's Drumheller Dragons. The Bandits are looking to make history. You'll see the defending AJHL champs are 18-0 tying the record for the longest win streak held by the 1993-94 Olds Grizzlies. With the win, they would eclipse the Grizz and probably a good omen too since Olds went on to win the Doyle Cup that year too. Currently, the Bandits have four players in the top ten in scoring, led by Cam McLeese and Anthony Petruzzelli. J or Junior B action between the Wainwright Bisons and Lloydminster Bandits has been cancelled due to the weather. The game has been rescheduled at a later date. The Bandits will head to Saddle Lake on Saturday. Snow is on the ground and temperatures are dropping. True signs winter is upon us, which normally means hockey season. But it's not hockey taking St. Paul by storm right now. It's football. As Clayton Brown explains, the Wheatland Football League champs are looking to add a provincial title. It's been a magical run for the St. Paul Lions. A 6-1 regular season turned into the club's fourth Wheatland Football League Championship in just the last 10 years. Our O-line and our D-line did really good that game, and Jason had a, obviously a really ranked game like he always does, but yeah, it was just an overall just dream come true. It's really unbelievable. Like you, you, You're just standing there and you're like, that, that was it. Like That's the game. We're, we're the winners now. We're the best of the best of the league. But as satisfying as being league champions is, the Lions are still hungry and they want to hunt down a provincial championship. We haven't done that well uh, when we've, we've been in provincials uh, in the past and uh, it's something that they're, um, they're excited about. They want to be able to say that they're getting to those next levels. As the Lions head into provincial playdowns, it presents yet another challenge. Unlike in their league, the team knows very little about their opponent, making preparation that much more important. It's kind of hard to know like what's like what's up, you know, because we never really seen these other teams. You don't know what the other leagues are like, so it's going to be definitely going to be hard. It is a little different. I mean, it's not like you're playing them the third time like last week against uh, against Coal Lake. So, so uh, you come up with the best game plan you, you, that you think will work, but until you actually get out on the field and see exactly what they've got, uh, you don't know how that game plan is going to turn out. 
The Lions travel to Statler for the quarterfinal game on Saturday. In St. Paul, Clayton Brown, New Cap Sports.